we're going to go over number 22. Uh, we're given this function here and its graph over here. And we're asked to state the natural domain of x. Uh, as you can see from the graph, uh, x is only greater than or equal to 0. You could also look at the equation and know that because of this square root, you can't plug in any negative numbers, right? Um, so it has to be greater than 0. Uh, does it have an inverse function? Explain. Uh, the way we can tell is if a function is an inverse is if it's 1 to 1. You can see here that it fails the uh, horizontal line test, right? For two different x values, uh, it has one single y value, right? Uh, so it is not one to one, it is many to one, right? So that's how you know it doesn't have an inverse. Uh, we're letting, so we're going to split this into two functions. We're going to call this part here g of x, right? That's what it's saying here. Add everything between 0 and 9 is g of x. Everything after 9 is called h of x. And we're trying to find the inverse, right? So uh, let's start with the function. The algebra on this one is going to get a little bit messy. Uh, but we'll see how it works, right? So the first thing you do is you go to make it into x and y. That just makes it easier to do the algebra when we switch to x and the y. Like that, right? Now we're working with the inverse function and we're trying to solve for y. So let's start by moving the x over, or the 1 over, so it's going to be x minus 1 equals y minus 6 square root of y. It's similar to problem 16 in that we, we basically need to complete the square on this. We need to create something that will multiply together. Uh, that's the same thing as something squared. So if you imagine, like, if I, I got to multiply two things together and it's got to give me y, right? So that's got to be square root of y and square root of y, right? And then when I multiply these two, or when I multiply, uh, you know, y times this thing and then this thing times y, they need to add up to give me negative 6. And then it needs to be a square. So this number basically needs to be something squared. And the way you find this number, it's always just half of this coefficient over here. So that's going to be minus 3 squared, right? So it's going to be minus 3, minus 3, like this. And you can, you can check. If you FOIL this out, if you distribute these, you're going to get this top expression. I'm not just allowed to add 9 to one side, right? I got Whatever I do to one side, i got to do to both sides. So we're going to add it to this side as well. That, that maintains the balance, right? And basically what this factors out to be is square root of y minus 3 squared. And the right-hand side is going to be x plus 8, right? Because negative 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. Um, and so we're there. Now we can try to solve. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. Don't forget you want the plus and minus. That gives us this. Um, and then we add 3 to both sides, so it's going to be 3 plus or minus the square root of x plus 8 equals the square root of y. And then we're going to square both sides to get y by itself. And we're going to decide about do we want the plus or the minus here. Uh, so this whole thing has to be squared, right? And then the last thing is just, you know, we were trying to find the inverse of g. So we're going to label this as g inverse of x. All right, so that's the inverse. Now we got to decide, do we want the plus or do we want the minus? Okay, so an easy way to, a good way to do this is if you have the graph, you can look at the graph, right? You can see, remember the domain and range switch for um, the graph. So the range for the inverse function should be between zero and nine, right? So if I look at this, I want to think, okay, the, the output numbers I should be getting should be between zero and nine. Whereas for this other piece, I would get values between nine and up. Right? So like one of these pieces, the plus or the minus is going to give me between 0 and 9, and the other piece is going to give me you know, 9 and up. <clears throat> you know, if I plug in the appropriate domain, right? Uh, so again, these are outputs. I should get outputs between 0 and 9 for this one, because that's how we defined the other piece. So let's check. Like if I plug in, uh, if I can plug in a number and get uh, with one of them and get more than 9, then it's going to be you know, that's not the one we're going to use. So let's try plugging in, um, I don't know, let's try plugging in 8 for x. Right? If I plug in 8 for x, I get square root of 16, which is 4. And then I either get negative 1 or I get 7. So that didn't quite work. Let's go higher for x. Let's go, well, I could think about what the smallest x could be. If x was negative 8, you would get uh, 3, right? Uh, but if x is, let's say, uh, what could we do, 17? 
then you get square root of 25 is 5. 3 plus 5, that still doesn't work. Let's do 73. If x is 73, then we get uh, square root of 81, which is 9. 3 plus 9 is 12, which is bigger than the 9, which is the maximum output we should get. So we should be using the minus sign in this case, right? Not the plus sign. Uh, because the plus sign could potentially give us the too big of a range. Um, so that's the inverse function for g between 0 and 9. Uh, verify that g of g inverse of 4 equals 4. Uh, let's just try that here. This is c i g of g inverse is basically going to be Um, I think the easiest way to do this is actually just going to be g, think about it as, you know, g of g inverse of 4. So let's find, uh, you know, g inverse of 4 first, right? So g, I'll just do it down here, g inverse of 4, just plug in 4 to the inverse function. So it's going to be 3 minus square root of 12 quantity squared. And then g of g inverse of 4 is just plugging in this to g, right? So then go back to g, and g is uh, x minus 6 square root of x. So everywhere we see x, we're going to put this. So 3 minus square root of 12 squared minus 6 square root of 3 minus square root of 12 quantity squared plus 1, right? So just everywhere we saw x in that original function, we put uh, g. Uh, these are going to cancel, right? This cancels with that. Uh, if you FOIL this out, you're going to get 9 minus 6 square root of 12 plus 12. Um, after this bracket's gone, if you distribute the negative 6, you get negative 18 plus 6 square root of 12 plus 1. Uh, the square root of 12s here are going to cancel. Um, and... Something's not quite right. Is that a minus 6? Minus 6 squared of y. Oh, this is supposed to be a... No, this is supposed to be positive 12. Mm, hold on a second. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I just I don't know what I'm doing. 9 plus 12 is 21, plus 1 is 22. 18 is 4, right? So g of g inverse of 4 is 4, right? So yes, that works. Uh, state the domain and range. Um, again, it's just flipping domain and range from what it was before, right? Before, uh, the domain was 0 to 9, so now the range is y such that y is between 0 and 9. And then uh, the domain for this is x such that before it was the y coordinate. So we'd kind of need to figure out, well, what was this y coordinate? You can figure that out by plugging in 0 here. You get 1. Uh, so it was between 1. And you got to figure out, well, what was the y value down here? When you plug in 9, you get 9 minus 6 times 3 plus 1. So it's negative 18. 9 minus 18 is negative 9 plus 1, negative 8. Uh, so it goes to negative 8, and obviously that's got to be switched, right? Negative 8's got to go over here, and 1's got to be here, because 1 is the biggest it can be. Uh, it says your domain, because they're just switched from before. And then d is going to be very similar, um, and I promised you I'd show you a different way to try to find this function, so I'll do that as well. Okay, I think the other one that might cause issues is this. Um, and so I think the easiest way to solve that one is with a uh, with a graph, right? We know that the inverse functions are going to be reflections over the line y equals x, right? So this graph, like this y-intercept of 0, 1 is going to turn into 1, 0. This uh, 9, negative 8 is going to turn into negative 8, 9, which is up here somewhere. And then your graph is going to look something like this. Uh, and then this x-intercept that's over here turns into a y-intercept up here, right? And so your graph looks something like that. Um, maybe come back a little bit more like this somewhat, right? Uh, but basically what we know is that, you know, we divided this function. We divided our original function here 
at neg 9, negative 8. So the, this other function is going to be divided there as well, right? That's why the domain for this other one down here was negative 8 to uh, 1, right? Because we're talking about it going from uh, negative 8 to 1, right? 1 is here, negative 8 is there. And then the other one gets defined uh, above that or um, after that, right? So basically where, where these two functions are going to be equal is where they intersect, right? And so like the, this blue part that I'm tracing now is the h of x and the red part is g of x. And so where they intersect is at 8, uh, negative 8, 9, right? So the x-coordinate is negative 8 for that one. That's where they intersect at negative 8.